gargoyle wings. How to go from suck to rock. My gargoyles are based on a design by Stalloween. If you don't know who Stalloween is, shame on you. You should. Stalloween is a paper mache master. He uses recyclable materials. So the body is made up of four two liter pop bottles, epoxied to a plywood base. There are these are water bottles. This is another long neck water bottle, another bottle for the snout. The remainder is construction paper and cellulose clay. Up the back, I have run a hose. And on the bottom, there's a hole. See, they're also named. Make sure that uh, they go on to the right, onto the correct uh, tower. In the tower itself, I have a, uh, a piece of black, PV, black PVC uh, plumbing pipe with a 90 degree elbow and a 400 watt fogger in each of the uh, towers to supply fog to the gargoyles. Um, the fog is uh, triggered using a pickaxe. About every two minutes it gives about a 20 second burst of fog. And What I've done differently this year is in the mouth I have a red LED flood that will go on at the same time the fog is triggered. And so uh, hopefully get red fog. So paper mache. Um, I don't, I love working in paper mache, but I just can't. In my, uh, my climate doesn't allow it. Um, I haven't found a good way to uh, waterproof them. I know Stalloween has something printed up uh, that he uh, used. Um, what I tried uh, when I first built these was uh, covering them in fiberglass resin because the first year they were pretty squidgy. We had enough rain to make them, uh, even, even though I had waterproofed it, um, it obviously wasn't enough and they got pretty squishy. So I covered them in flat fiberglass resin and that helped. Um, but the problem is, is that the mice, we have a big field out behind us and in the winter the mice will get into the garage and if they you know can can get at the uh, the paper mache because it's flour and uh, and they're sneaky they'll only eat the uh, the areas that you can't see so for instance last year they had eaten the back of a, this guy you can see right from there to there was chewed so I had to uh, fiberglass them and uh, this year so far so good so we start with a template uh, in this case just out of cardboard and that helps to determine where some cuts are going to need, be, need to be made as you can see this will run into the leg if mounted there so I'm going to have to make some allowance for for this and we'll probably have to on the other side so once the template is done we transfer that onto a board and you can see I've got two lines there this is the original template line but I don't really like that I think it's a I think it's a little too um, narrow this angle. I think uh, I'd like to see it more like that. 
and then come off. So, hence I uh, transferred that onto there. So, and now what we do is we take our PVC pipe. This is a conduit pipe. It's the cheapest stuff that I can find. It's gray. Melts really easy. And uh, that is where that butts up against right there and then begin the heating process. I'm also going to extend this line out as well. I'll probably take it out to, I don't know, here or so, just to get a little bit of longer, um, more broad look to the wings. So, so I've now traced the template onto this stuff. I think it's called Coroplast. Um, I can't seem to find any sheets of it, so these things are about seven bucks each for rent and for sale and all those types of signs. So uh, then I do match up this to make sure that, you know, kind of those angles are what I want and I want them where it is and it has the, uh, these are all where I want them to be and everything gets eyeballed and uh, now we're gonna cut it out and hot glue it on. So I have taped the two um, for rent signs together that way uh, when I cut them out obviously they're going to be uh, the same size and the same shape and uh, so by taping the edges I'm hoping that's going to stay together and let me cut most of it out before uh, before I have to uh, change tack here so here we go so I've also now that I've cut taped this edge and that will uh, make sure the two pieces stay together while I'm cutting out the uh, wing part the bat wing side PVC is now glued onto the coroplast and I'm going to add some ribs for the wings. So the ribs are now glued onto the wings. Um, I point sharpen some dowels, stuck them in here. I'm also going to have get a couple large dowels out of here and glue them on there for kind of spiky look. So uh, I'll get those done up and glued on, those spikes, and then I'm going to start uh, filling in this area here with um, some great stuff foam. I'm going to use window and door as it doesn't expand as much as regular great stuff. I just want enough to get a good look, but I don't want the thing to be like this huge, huge thing. So. Okay, I had to put them up on the gargoyle just so I could get to the back. I wanted to complete these, the foaming of it anyways, while all the foam was still wet and not cured. That way if I have anything that I need to do um, to it during the curing process, this is packing things down or what have you, um, it's all at the same level. So there it is right now, we'll let that cure up and paint. So the foam is now cured on the wings so from this point they will be painted flat black and then I will use a sea sponge and apply um, two coats of gray, um, two different colors of gray basically and try and match it up to the same texture and, and color scheme of the gargoyle. So as you can see the wings on the left clearly suck while the wings on the right clearly rock. So there you have it. Also when you're going to build big monuments such as that thing there you should really have a better place to store it.